Edgar Wright is one of the most unique and talented filmmakers working at the moment. His movies are creative, fast-paced coming-of-age stories packed with high doses of fun. While most people on YouTube like to focus on Wright's visual style, there are also many lessons that writers should take from his screenplays. I want to analyze some of the elements in Wright's stories to show that these techniques can not only be fun, but important to effectively tell dramatic narratives. Today, I want to look at how Edgar Wright handles exposition, dialogue, and philosophical conflict in his movies, and how you can apply these techniques in your own writing. This is why you should study Edgar Wright. In my video on how to write exposition for your screenplay, I've explained that exposition dumps should be avoided at all costs. This is because these can cause your story to lose its momentum or your audience to feel patronized and bored. But sometimes large chunks of information cannot be avoided. When needed, the writer can make them interesting by using stylized exposition. Stylized exposition must accomplish three goals. Be entertaining, show don't tell, and most importantly, attack with exposition. Wright is a master at stylized exposition by making large amounts of information fun and even memorable. Let's take a look at a scene from Shaun of the Dead. Listen, Mum, sit tight, okay? You're not safe there. We're coming over. I don't want to cause a fuss. We're coming to get you, Barbara. In this scene, having just discovered about the zombie apocalypse, Sean and Ed are brainstorming a plan of what to do next. So, what's the plan? Right. We take Pete's car, we drive over to Mum's, we go in, we take care of Philip. I'm so sorry, Philip. Then we grab Mum, we go over to Liz's place, hole up, have a cup of tea, and wait for all this to blow over. Conceptually, this scene had the danger of becoming boring. It could have been filled with long chunks of exposition delivered in an uninteresting way. But Wright ensures that the audience is engaged by firstly making the exposition fun. Wright cleverly avoids a boring exposition dump by making the scene punchy and silly with every rendition of the plan getting increasingly dumbed down and over the top. Take car, go to mums, kill Phil, sorry, grab Liz, go to the Winchester, have a nice cold pint and wait for all this to blow over. When the audience is entertained, they don't even notice that they are being fed exposition, but instead go along for the ride. Yeah, boy! Because of how fun it is, what essentially is an expository scene has become one of the most iconic moments in Wright's filmography. Secondly, this scene does not only tell us about Sean and Ed's plan, but it shows it to us. Instead of merely having Sean and Ed stand in a room and discuss their plan, Wright decides to visually show each one of their renditions. This keeps things interesting and adds to the comedy. Lastly, this scene attacks with exposition. We now know how Sean and Ed will try to rescue Liz and Barbara. This moves the story in a new direction as they set their plan in motion. In your own writing, avoid exposition dumps. But if you can't, try using a form of stylized exposition. Find a creative or funny way to get the information across while showing and not telling, as well as attacking with exposition. Wright's dialogue is characterized as being quick, quirky, and with a back and forth nature. We all love quoting lines like, the greater good, or you got red on you. You got red on you. However, this charm can only be created because Wright ensures his dialogue is purposeful within the context of each scene. In every dialogue-heavy scene, Wright makes sure that the audience clearly knows the answer to the following three questions. Who wants what from whom? What happens if they don't get it? And why now? Let's look at the final argument scene in The World's End. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who put you in charge, huh? In this scene, after escaping body-snatching aliens and almost completing their pub crawl, Gary King and his friends are captured by the network. What ensues is an increasingly absurd debate between three drunken men and a hyper-intelligent alien entity. It is the scene with many quips and quotable lines due to the back and forth between Gary's gang and the network. Now, you might think Gary is a bit of a cock, and, and, and he is a bit of a cock. Hmm? 
by his my cock. Oh, thanks, man. However, behind this fun and quotability is a clear understanding of character and want. Who wants what from whom? Gary King wants to take down the network by proving that its plan is flawed. In contrast, the network wants to convince Gary and his friends to give up and join its army. What happens if they don't get it? If Gary loses the argument, he will be forced to join the network. By joining the network, Gary will be giving away his freedom, the one thing he values the most. This is what he has to lose. If the network loses the argument, Gary will continue to be an imminent threat to their plan and possibly put an end to it. The network can lose the thing it values the most, the order it has established. And why now? This debate has to be settled now because the network has finally cornered Gary King and placed him in a position where he has no option but to listen to it. One of the sides has to come out winning. By keeping these three questions in mind, Wright is able to motivate his characters and put them into conflict with one another. Once he has done that, then he can naturally derive the witty one-liners from the characters' motivations and conflicting wants. Why don't you just get in your rocket and fuck off back to Legoland, you cunt? Oh. Yeah! Stop fucking starbucking us, man! Yeah. When you're first writing dialogue, especially in comedies, don't focus on being funny. Focus on clearly answering those three questions that provide the scene context. Once you have done that, it'll be a lot easier to naturally build jokes and quips between the characters. I've said multiple times that the core of storytelling is the philosophical conflict externalized through characters and their actions. And at first glance, it would seem that Wright's movies do not prioritize the philosophical conflict, but rather zany concepts. A league of evil ex-boyfriends, stoners in a zombie apocalypse, and a pub crawl in the middle of a body-snatching alien invasion. These all seem like wacky and fun ideas meant to lead to laugh-out-loud moments and visual splendor. However, what makes Wright's concepts impactful is the way they are not there just to be fun, but rather to externalize the philosophical conflict. In other words, these supernatural foes serve as external obstacles that complement or conflict with the character's philosophical beliefs. In Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, Scott lives in a hyper-reality that operates in the same logic as comic books and anime. In this world, in order to date Ramona Flowers, he must defeat her seven evil exes in anime-inspired fights. At face value, this seems like a concept that is merely played for jokes and cool visuals. But Wright uses this concept to create external elements that explore the movie's philosophical conflict of emotional immaturity versus emotional maturity. Scott is a deeply immature young man who views the world through the lens of comics and video games. Due to this inability to grow, he struggles to be engaged in a serious relationship. The League of Evil Exes serves to externalize the emotional baggage that comes with dating someone new. By having to fight the exes, Scott is not only facing increasingly powerful foes, but he is also facing his own emotional immaturity to be in a real romantic relationship. By defeating them, Scott must move from believing that emotional immaturity is more comfortable and safe to believing that emotional maturity is needed and necessary. You want to fight me? For her? No. I want to fight you for me. Scott earned the power of self-respect. By fighting these opposing entities, Wright's protagonists come into conflict with external threats that challenge their philosophical beliefs and allow them to grow as people. When writing your scripts, ensure that your concepts are not only fresh, but that they are natural extensions of the story's philosophical conflict. In the realm of writer-directors, Edgar Wright is not only a master of fun, but a master of purposeful fun. Fun stories are always enjoyable, but when we can use their fun elements in meaningful ways, they can transcend mere entertainment and leave a lasting impact. And this is why you should study Edgar Wright. You can study his movies and learn how to stylize your exposition, add purpose to your dialogue, and use your concept to externalize your philosophical conflict. Are you stuck at page 15 of your screenplay? Are you confused as to how to actually get to the end of that first draft quickly and without hating every piece of it? 
then I have a video for you to watch that handles the three things you need to actually get that story out onto the page. Click the first link in the description to watch for free now. This video was written by Alberto Haufeld, a member of the Practical Screenwriting team. Thanks for watching.